today I'll be teaching you how to download, set up, and use Rojo, which is the best Roblox Studio plugin any scripter could ever ask for. Using the word best doesn't even describe just how good Rojo actually is. Rojo is super simple and easy to use, and it's actually used by tons of the most popular games on Roblox. Rojo enables us to use external code editors, which are 10 times better than Roblox Studio. It also does so much more than just that, but let's start getting into how to actually use Rojo. So first things first, when it comes to installing and setting up Rojo on your system, we need to get Visual Studio Code. I'll leave a link down below in the description to Visual Studio Code and all the other download links that you're going to be needing. But if you haven't already realized, Visual Studio Code is the brand new code editor that we'll be using with Rojo. In my opinion, it's one of the best code editors. And if you've developed in other programming languages, you might have already used Visual Studio Code as well. Anyways, to install Visual Studio Code, all you have to do is click this download button right here, save the installer to wherever you want to, then open the file that we just downloaded and that should take you through the installation process. Once you have Visual Studio installed, you should see something similar to the screen that we see right here. You probably won't have the same recent page that I have because that shows all the projects that I've recently opened, but you should see a similar screen. We then want to install the Rojo Visual Studio Code extension into our Visual Studio Code. Also, real quick, if you see any text that says VSC or VS Code, there's a couple of different acronyms or different ways that people just say Visual Studio Code. Anyways, to install the plugin, you're just going to go to the link that I put down below in the description, and that should take you to the marketplace.visualstudiocode.com, and all you have to do from here is click install, and you might have a little window that pops up right here. Just go ahead and click click continue. This should automatically open up this page in Visual Studio Code and all you have to do is click the install button right here. But since I already have it installed, these are the options that I have. Now that we have the extension installed, let's actually create a brand new folder and start creating a brand new project to work with. So we'll go up the file and click open folder. Now I'm just going to go to my desktop and create a brand new folder and I'm just going to rename this to showcase because obviously this project is just to showcase Rojo. Now that we have that folder created, let's go ahead and click select folder and now Visual Studio Code will open up with the Explorer set inside of that specific folder. The next thing we want to do is initialize the basic Rojo setup inside of this specific folder, and we can easily do that because Rojo gives us that ability. To do this, we need to open up the command palette inside of Visual Studio Code, and the hotkey for that is Control, Shift, and P. Otherwise, you can go up to the View tab, click on View, and then click on Command Palette. Now that we have that open, we can already see there's a Rojo command here, but if you don't see that, just type in Rojo, click on Open Menu. Now it says Rojo not installed. Rojo is not installed in this project. So then we'll just go ahead and click on Install Rojo now. That'll do all of the setup for for us and now we're all good to go. Now we see that this workspace contains no project files. So we can go ahead and click on create a new one. And now that we've done that, Rojo has set up a simple basic project for us. And now we also want to install the Rojo plugin in Roblox Studio. So let's go ahead and click on install Roblox Studio plugin. And then we can see Rojo Roblox Studio plugin has been installed. Let's quickly explore what Rojo has actually done for us. Let's look inside of the default.json.project file. Inside of here, we can see name. This name property is only for internal use. So whenever you're syncing Roblox Studio and Visual Studio code, that is where the name will be shared between and the name doesn't exactly matter too much. They set the name of this to showcase because that's the name of the folder. Then below that we have the tree property and now inside of the tree property we see a bunch of different things. We see we have the replicated storage, we have the server script service, we have starter player and inside of starter player we have starter player scripts. We also have the workspace and this also has a couple of things inside of it like the base plate and then we also see the lighting and sound service as well. Now it's easier for me to explain the contents of the tree and how this stuff works if I can also show you what it looks like inside side of our game inside of Roblox Studio. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to hop into Roblox Studio and just open up a base plate. It doesn't really matter. It can literally be anything in Roblox Studio, but we're just clicking the base plate because it's the most simplest thing possible. Then what we want to do is we want to go over to our plugins tab and you should now see that you have the Rojo plugin installed. And now when we click on this, we see a little screen opens up and there is the settings and the connect button. It also says localhost and there's a port here, which allows you to actually adjust this. Realistically, I've never modified this myself, so I won't be showcasing that in this video. The only thing that I ever do with Rojo is click connect and that's it. I don't touch the settings and I don't touch localhost or the port here. Now for us to be able to click the connect button, we actually need to start up the server inside of the Visual Studio Code. So going back inside of Visual Studio Code, there's two ways to easily start up the server. Right here at the very bottom of Visual Studio Code, there's a button that says serve most recent project file, which when we click on that, that'll actually refer to this project file right here and it will start up the server. Alternatively, you can go to the command palette, click on Rojo, and then we, if we look under the projects in this workspace, we can go ahead and click on this specific project right here and that will We'll turn the server on so that we can now connect to here from Roblox Studio. So going back to Roblox Studio, we can then click on connect and we should now see that this is working. And we can even see that this text displays showcase, which is the name of our project that is displayed right here. If we go back into studio, that's actually not the only thing that has changed in our studio. If we look, we can see inside of replicated storage that we actually now have a folder named common. And inside of this folder, we actually have a module script named hello. Also, if we look inside of the server script service, we see a script called server. And if we look inside of the starter player, inside of the starter player scripts, we can see a 
local script called client. Now those aren't the only things that have changed. If we look once again inside of Visual Studio Code, and for instance, if we look at the sound service and look at its properties, we should see if the respect filtering enabled has been set to true. So if we go back inside of Roblox Studio, click on the sound service, we can see that respect filtering enabled has been set to true. Now if we go back into the Visual Studio Code, let's just set this to false for right now. Click save, go back into Roblox Studio, and you might see an error right here which says could not apply all request changes. But if we look in the sound service once again, we can actually see it. The respect filtering enabled has been set to false. So we can see by just modifying inside of our default.project.json, we were actually able to modify that setting inside of the sound service inside of Studio. Now we could also modify another property of the sound service as well. For instance, let's modify the distance factor property. So going back inside of here, we can see properties and inside of here, we can list all the different properties that we want to modify. So for instance, right now we're modifying the respect filtering enabled property. And if we wanted to add another property to this, all we have to do is add a comma, hit enter, and now inside of quotation marks, we have to put the name of the property. And remember, the one we want to modify is distance factor. So we're going to say distance factor, make sure that's spelled all correctly, then put a semicolon and we could type in five, for example. Now, when we click save and look back inside of studio, we can see that the distance factor has been changed to five. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into the default.project.json setup. I'll make another video on this and we'll go even further into this and helping you understand. I'm just trying to give you guys a small look into how things are set up and how you could easily modify these simple little things. Now that we've gone through how we could easily modify certain properties inside of our default project.json, let's actually look up towards the top where we can see the replicated storage. Now, once again, if we look inside of the studio, inside of the replicated storage, we can actually see there is a folder in here called common. And inside of that is where our scripts are at. The thing is though, is I don't really like this setup. I don't think the common folder is necessary. I would prefer my scripts to just be inside of the replicated storage, not inside of a folder inside of replicated storage. So what I'm going to do to make this happen is I'm simply just going to delete the word common right here. And now all we have is the path property right there. So when we go ahead and click save, we should see that the folder has been removed from the replicated storage. The next thing that we should explore is where are these scripts actually coming from? Well, if you look inside of a project, we have a folder called SRC, which is short for source. Now, if we open this up, we can actually see a couple more folders inside of here, client, server, and shared. And if we look inside of any of these folders, we should see that we have files inside of them. Now, if we're looking at our default.project.json, we should be able to see that these folders actually line up with the path property. So for example, with the replicated storage, we can see that we have a path which is source slash shared. And of course, inside of our source folder, we have a folder called shared, which is right here. So what this is basically saying is that every single thing that's inside of the shared folder inside of the source folder should be put directly into the replicated storage inside of Roblox Studio. The same thing goes for the server script service and the starter players slash starter player scripts as well. For instance, if we look inside of our starter player scripts, we should see the same stuff that's inside of the client folder, inside of the source folder, or inside of the server script service. If we look inside of the server folder, which is inside of the source folder, we should also see all those scripts and contents also on Roblox Studio. Now, what if we wanted to add another directory? Like imagine if we wanted to add a directory for every single service inside of here, such as the replicated storage, the server script service, the server storage, the starter GUI, and so on. Well, it's actually really simple and we'll do one for the server storage. So we'll add this between the server script service and the starter player. And we're going to say server storage, then semicolon, and then brackets. Now inside of here, we actually have to add a path. So in quotes, we'll say dollar sign path. And now in quotes, we actually have to add a path from our Visual Studio Code project. So let's go ahead and add a new folder inside of source and we'll say storage. So then inside the quotes for our path, we're going to say source slash storage. And now that should be good. The last thing that we need to do is we need to add a comma to this at the end of the brackets. And now that should fix all the errors. And then all we have to do is click save. The next thing that we should probably do is test this out. So let's go ahead and just copy this script and paste it directly into this folder. Just click control C on this script and then control V on that specific folder. And now if we look inside of Roblox Studio, this actually isn't synced. Like we don't see anything inside of the server storage. And if we look at Rojo, we can actually see there's a yellow triangle there. If we click on this, it displays an error. Just click OK and then click connect once again. And that should be all good. It kind of refreshes it. And now if we look inside of the server storage, we can actually see there's a script named hello inside of here, which means that this is working perfectly. So anything that we put inside of the storage folder should be put directly into our server storage inside of our studio. Okay, so now that you understand how to basically add your own directories to Roblox Studio, the next thing we should understand and explore is how scripts are created. If we look inside of the shared or even the storage folder, we can see that there is a file named hello.lua. Now, if we click on this, we can actually see this is basically what their example of a module script looks like. Realistically, this might look a little bit confusing because it doesn't look like a normal module script, but you can literally turn it into a normal module script. Like for example, let's just say local module equals table. And then at the end, we just say return module. Now that's just a normal module script. It's not like your code or anything has to be different. It can literally be the exact same code that you used inside of Roblox Studio, but they just generated these simple scripts that they felt would be a good example to show people 
people of how to use Roja. So don't feel confused or don't feel like you need to make module scripts any different than you do in Roblox Studio. They are literally the exact same and I'm showing you that here. Now if we go ahead and click save, which is control S, that saves the file. And now if we look in Roblox Studio, if we go inside of the replicate storage, look inside of this hello module script right here, we can see the code changes that we just made. Actually, if we wanted to, we could just even add something inside of Visual Studio code like print true, save the file. Now look inside of Roblox Studio and we can see that this exact code statement has been added to this file as well. So literally anything that you put inside of here, like let's just add another print one statement. And then once you click save, that will be synced directly with Roblox Studio to the exact same script. They won't change your code or anything. Then the main thing that you need to understand for scripting with Rojo is that the file names do matter when it comes to what specific script you're going to be using. So for example, inside of shared, which is the replicated storage directory, we have the file named hello.lua. When you create a file and just put .lua at the end of it, that means that Rojo will turn that specific file into a module script. Now, if we see inside a server, we have init.server.lua. When a file has .server.lua on it, Rojo turns that file into a server script. And then when you have .client.lua in the file name, that means that Rojo will turn that into a local script. And you should be able to easily understand this because if we look inside of our server script service, we have a script right there. And if we look inside of the starter player, inside of the starter player scripts, we have a local script right here. So for example, if we add a new file inside of shared and just say test.client dot Lua. Then if we go inside of a replicated storage, we can now see that a local script named test has been created. Additionally, if we create a new file test dot server dot Lua, and then look inside of a replicated storage, we can now see a server script named test has been created inside of the replicated storage. But anyways, with all that being said, you should now have Visual Studio Code with Rojo installed on both the Visual Studio Code and Roblox Studio, and you should be able to sync your project between the two. Considering this video is already pretty lengthy, I will make another follow-up video to this to explain to you how to use GitHub and also Roblox LSP to make your Roblox scripting experience with Visual Studio Code unbelievably better. But that's going to be it for right now. Anyways, if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe on and turn post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Also, have Patreon, if you guys like to support me and gain access to countless scripts that I've made in my past videos, there's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.